So, my name is Ulf Jansson, and I'm professor in inorganic chemistry, and I'm program professor for the inorganic chemistry program. We are about uh, 30 people, 10 seniors, and about 20 PhD students. And I guess that you have met many of those in, in, on your courses. Um, we are working with materials, and our core activity is to synthesize new materials. So we are using chemistry, trying to make completely new types of materials which can be used in different applications. And in order to do that, we're using a lot of different methods. And I'm sure that many of you have met these methods during the courses here in Uppsala. So we are in principle working from reactions in vapor, in solution, and also in the solid state. And, uh, oh, sorry. Here you see some examples of materials which we are working with. It's everything from diamond, graphene, different kinds of oxides, carbides, nitrides, and so on, and even amorphous materials. Uh, when you talk about materials, it's not only to make a certain compound. You also have to make it with a certain form and shape, and that we call microstructure. That means that our material must have certain dimensionality. It could be nanoparticles, it could be uh, uh, formed like, like one-dimensional structures, it could be two-dimensional, like this, this is graphene, uh, or it could be nanoporous or have any other kind of form and shape. And in order to get that, we have to need use chemistry. We are using uh, chemical reactions to actually control and design this very special microstructure. And this is a true challenge. It's not only to make the material, we also have to make it with a proper microstructure. Now, uh, a lot of our activities are related to energy-related materials. And that's because, of course, energy is very important, as we have heard. Uh, but also, this is a, a prioritized area in, uh, at Uppsala University. And you can see a difference here compared to Stian Bjorn Sturing's presentation. They have a group working focused on one activity. We have many, many different activities. We have perhaps a dozen of different projects <laughs> focusing on different kinds of, of, of projects. And I would like to show you three examples of something called replacement. That's something we are working with. When I gave the title to Helena, she said, this sounds boring, because I said, replacement, new materials for the future. So I added in game changer, because what actually this is, is that in many cases, we have materials, which is nice in the laboratory. But if you would like to use them practically, we need to change some element in them in order to make it possible. And I will start with the first example. Uh, and this is new magnetic materials. Uh, today we are using a lot of magne magnetic materials, for example in electric machines and so on. If you look on one of those large windmills, wind power plants, there are hundreds of kilos of magnets used in those. And many of those magnets are using rare earth metals. And rare earth metals are not really that rare, but they are expensive, and they are strategic. That means that it's essentially one country, China, who controls the production of these rare earth metals. So what we would like to do is to find other magnetic materials where we actually can use simple, cheap metals instead of those rare earth metals. So we have a group in, in, in our program working with this. They are trying to use chemistry to synthesize new magnetics magnetic materials. And here you see one example of such a compound. It's an iron manganese phosphor silicon compound. A very important part in this work is to determine the structure and try to understand how uh, the magnetism works in this kind of, of compound. Also, what you can see in, in our program is that we are working a lot together with physicists and engineers. Because our knowledge is to do the material and usually we are working with physicists and engineers to actually try to find out how they can be applied. And in this project, we are working with physics and engineering, uh, and also on companies, uh, trying to make, for example, a refrigerator. And this refrigerator works with something called the magnetocaloric effect. 
And that means that we are essentially having a magnet. We add in a magnetic field. And when we <coughs> uh, magnetize the material, it will heat it up. We can expel the heat. And when we take away the magnet, it will cool it down. So by using this, we can get the uh, refrigerator without any moving part by just changing the magnetic field. We are not really there yet, but soon. Another example is photocatalytic water splitting. And you have heard about solar fuel, how important that is. And we have a group here, a small group, working, trying to make new materials for photocatalytic water splitting. And that means that we are uh, irritating a material uh, with solar light, and then we kick out an electron, and we can form oxygen, and we can form Oh, sorry. Uh, so essentially what we are doing is that we are producing hydrogen and oxygen out of water. And to do that, we need a good material. And we need a catalyst, usually, who can catalyze the production of the hydrogen. And recently, uh, one of our program uh, took part in a, in a project to produce a completely new type of, of um, um, material based on six solar cells. And this material here is a copper indium gallium selenide, shows excellent properties. It's above 10% efficiency for producing, uh, for, for uh, water splitting. The problem now is the catalyst, because we are using platinum here. And platinum is impossible to use if you want to uh, apply this in a large scale. So recently, uh, this scientist, uh, Thomas Evenson received a large grant to actually reduce or replace this catalyst with something more cheap and easily available than platinum. He's just not hiring PhD students, if somebody's interested. Finally, I will talk about contact materials. Now, electrical contact sounds boring. How can that be important? But if you look on your car or in your, in your mobile phone, you will find that we have a lot of electrical contacts. And they are made of gold or silver, usually. And you know, gold and silver is very expensive, really, really expensive. And more important, it's soft. So it's very easily weared out. And if you have a problem with electrical contacts, or if you have a problem with your car, it's most likely some kind of electrical contact problem. So <clears throat> another example is in, in electrical grids when we transport energy or electricity, in order to, to transform uh, what we are transporting here, we need big, big contacts made out of silver usually. And today, that's fine, but in the future when we have solar power plants or solar cells and we have wind power mills, we need to switch much more often. And when we switch a lot, we will wear out the silver. So we need another electrical contact. Another example here is if we want to use fuel cell cars. Now, in fuel cell cars, we are using the solar fuel. Uh, what we are using is a fuel cell stack. And the fuel cell stack consists of a lot of plates made of uh, sol uh, stainless steel. And these plates have uh, uh, patterns where we are transporting the gas, transporting the hydrogen. Now, the thing here is that stainless steel corrodes. We need a coating on that, which is non-corrosive. And that's the best coating today is gold. But gold is expensive, and you will not have any possibility to buy a car made out of a gold-plated solar uh, fuel cell. So what to do here? Well, we have a project for many years where we are trying to make new electrical contacts based on simple, simple metals. In this case, titanium and carbon. Carbon is not a metal, but it's needed to get certain properties. And we have developed a technique using chemistry where we actually can produce such a nanocomposite material. And this nanocomposite material has really, really good electrical contact properties. And the, the uh, secret here is to add one to three atomic layers of this carbon uh, matrix between the grains. And that's a true challenge to be able to do that. And today, we actually have this material at testing at the ABB company. So in summarize, replacement is really, really important. We have many projects on that. 
And we are doing those projects together with physics, engineering, and also by this, together with the Swedish industry. Okay, thank you.